We don't spend here. I was aware that people stopped noticing things. They stopped wanting to know. For instance, in a certain teacher's classroom, I won't tell you which, that was just really funny. A certain stuffed animal makes its way around the classroom, always hiding in plain sight. The thing is, I've been here for a while, and I've not even noticed until after Christmas break. In writer's craft, we read a story about World War III. Yes, World War III. In this story, the main character is the only civilian to know that World War III had come and gone because he was the only person who sat there and noticed. This is probably because it only lasted 245 seconds or approximately four minutes. But why didn't anyone notice? Simply because they were glued to their television sets, waiting to see what would happen next in the equivalent of a reality show. Well, that's not exactly it. But go read it for yourself, 28 pages. Anyway, to prove a point, we were given a quiz of two sides. The first side had questions like, what country did America recently become allies with? And what was the summit occurring between African nations and the EU? The other side had quite different questions like, why was Snooki arrested? And what does Grand Arena stand for? It was no surprise that most of the class were better on the side of the pop culture references than world events. So if World War III came about, would you notice? In grade nine, I had an imaginary friend named Lily. She lives in London and she was from Chicago, although she pronounced it Chicago. I know what you're thinking. DJ, you're way too old to have an imaginary friend. Well, my imaginary friend was awesome. And she we could see her as well. This could be because we share a collective mind, or because we're exposed to the same stimuli and we're hallucinating the same thing, or maybe because she was an actual person just getting that out there. <laughs> She'd take me to Starbucks, DQ, feed me Thai foods, proceed to eat my Thai food, and do a dance called the Black Booty Dance from A Squad to B Squad. And she would only do this when she was wearing these special brand bikinis. Sometimes I wouldn't see her for days at a time. And the only evidence of her presence would be a few telltale crumbs on my desk and some empty bottles of Starbucks frappuccinos. Now that I think about it, she wasn't really imaginary, although she might as well have been. No one really knew of her existence, except for a few people that I can actually count on two hands. I find this odd because she has the record number of attention ever. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if she still does, but she and this little great friend would be back. Lily was truly one of the most interesting people that I've ever met, and it's a shame no one ever got to know her, because honestly, I'm sure everyone would have liked her as much as Chibi and I did. Over the summer, I became addicted to a TV show called The Big Bang Theory, and over the course of a few weeks, I watched the first three seasons. As I watched each episode, I noticed at the very end of the episode, after the credits, a whole screen would come up. At the top, in big letters, was Chuck Lore, and under it was a lot of text, and sometimes a picture, and was different for every episode. This image would stay on the screen for five seconds and then fade to black. I didn't really think anything of it until one day I hit the pause button at the right time. When I read what was on the screen, I snorted so loud my four year old cousin started crying. Anyway, this man, Chuck Lore, who's the writer and producer for Two and a Half Men and the Big Bang Theory. Writes about everything from solving racial issues by referring to people by their actual color. For example, there are no white people. They are beige. And sometimes they're gray if they're sick. He also wrote about his views on life, which in his opinion is very intolerable. Anyway, the rule of words are worth reading. And I suggest you do when you have nothing else to do. If I didn't have if I didn't let curiosity get the best of me, I wouldn't have started to talk with often very funny, very funny words. You know what's awesome about not noticing, about noticing everything? Well, not everything, just most things. Chuck Lord does. After writing and producing TV for 20 years, he developed a survival mechanism he liked to call showbiz peripheral vision. What this meant was that he could set his attention on the work at hand and still be able to see what was going on around him. The huddled confabs, the whispered sighs, the sideways glances, the roll of the eyes, the smirks of disdain, the sulking pout, the exhalations of disgust, the 
looks of admiration and the endless variations of body language that revealed impatience, rejection, jealousy, and simple disbelief that he was in charge and you weren't. He saw it all, and he didn't comment. He just made a note of it. And occasionally he would respond in a roundabout fashion that made you think that he was clear right. He is not. He's simply watching. Just thought you might like to know. I realize that not all of you watch TV or read. Some of you socialize like FJ and know everybody in this school, or at least like to think they do. <laughs> Some of you have been here forever, like down in the world, and the school holds no more secrets. But for most of you, at least the, most, the vast majority of you have much to discover. I'm not only talking about Ripley, but to your life in general. There's so much out there waiting to be discovered. In the end, when you leave here, you might not miss the school, but you will mostly, most likely miss the idea of the people and things you never got to know, and it's a horrible feeling. On association weekend, however many years from now, you're going to meet someone and you're going to hit it off. You ask, oh, what year are you from? <coughs> awkward silence. Why so awkward? For two reasons. Reason number one, you both have name tags with your name and year on them. So that was a stupid question. <laughs> Reason number two, you realize that you were both here for the same amount of time and could have known each other but didn't. Why didn't you? You were too self-absorbed in your little tick. You were in your room. You had your headphones on a little too tight. Or something else was distracting you. In 10 years, you don't want to look back on any experiences having thought that you missed out on something. So I challenge you to notice something or someone cool. For example, while wandering around aimlessly on campus, which I do very often, I found two time capsules. One in the ground and one in a pillar. If you don't know where they are, try and find them, I dare you. Find something that makes that's cool and makes you feel happy or sad. Because in these winter months, it's hard to stay motivated. And you look outside, it's horrible. A break of the monotony would be nice. So you can respond to my challenge in one of two ways. You can just say, whatever, this is just another speech. And it's really early, I actually don't blame you. I'm kind of tired of myself. Or you can accept my challenge like Barney Stinson from How I Met Your Mother. So my question is, what aren't you paying attention to?